Hey guys, my name is Nico Tia. I'm the captain and owner of Sailing Vessel Paradigm 2.0. Sailing is what I do. I've been sailing pretty much since I can remember. In the last five years, I've traveled over 30,000 nautical miles across the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, been all over the East Coast, and now my playground is the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Cortez. All right, so we're still in Zihuatanero. It's our third day here, uh, and we've had a great time at the, the market, at the basketball court and everything. Uh, but, uh, you know, the end of May is coming soon, and it's time for us to lift the anchor and get on our way to Baja Navidad. Alright, so uh, we just got out of Zihuatanero Bay um, and uh, we're starting to see the, the resorts of Extapa over there, all those high rises. Um, and uh, we're gonna go in front of Marina Extapa. The boat is actually suffering from a little bit of uh, downgraded speed, uh, and that's because the, the bottom of the hull is a bit dirty. Covering the 6.5 miles from Zihuatanero to Extapa took us about an hour and a half, and then we found a pretty good spot in the bay to clean the hull. We're just temporarily anchored in front of uh, uh, a little beach that's in front of Clemet Extapa. So I want to get my uh, trusty, rusty old scraper and uh, get underneath the hull and, and scratch the barnacles that are uh, stuck to the hull. It should give us like about three quarter of a knot more, but over 200 miles, it, it kind of makes a difference. I don't have a scuba rig to do that. But I used to free dive a fair amount, so I have these nifty uh, free diving fins. I've had these since I was like 18 years old. And uh, I'm just gonna get underneath the boat and start scraping. a fair amount of work to, to get it all done they're not too big so they're gonna be easy to take off but there are a fair amount of them all over the, the hull but the good news is once it's done it should give us like a fair appreciation of our boat speed to get to Baja Navidad so it's worth it we'll do it normally I pay a diver to do that but my schedule and they're on theirs. This was a lot of work, so uh, we decided we needed some tacos and beer. How far do you think the beach is? 500 feet? You know, I've never done that before. <laughs> Why don't you grab the camera? <laughs> We're just gonna swim back to the boat and uh, there seems to be a little bit of wind that we can use. It's not too strong so the wave action is not gonna be too bad uh, and it, it, sadly it comes from the, right, the wrong direction so it, it's against us to go to Baja Navidad but we can tack our way and close all uh, back to there I think with what we got. So we're gonna try it out. If it doesn't work we'll just motor there. Time to lift the anchor. The windlass controller that came with the boat kept breaking down. It was kind of expensive. I replaced two of them and eventually I got fed up and I bought this one, which cost me $15 on Amazon and it came from China. It's a radio control unit and I use this. There's got an in and an out uh, button. So of course right now I'm gonna push in and radio control, it, it radio controls uh, the solenoid. For $15, this unit completely replaces the original unit 
that was way more expensive and because it sits in my hand it doesn't get in contact with water because when I don't use it I just throw it in the cabin it doesn't corrode Typically, the dominant Naruto leaves are mild in the winter on the west coast of Mexico. Unfortunately for us, we had to motor against 15 to 20 knots of wind when we left Extapa making our way north towards Baja Navidad. This was uncomfortable, but we were able to keep making way. What was not great for us was perfect for the clipper race boat we came across while they were making their way south in ideal sailing conditions. Eventually, the adverse condition forced us to adjust our navigation plan. We elected to stop in Manzanillo to rest and wait for the winds to die down. All right, so we're about uh, 16 miles away from the entrance of Manzanillo Bay. Uh, it's uh, like I, I put that point right there. So we're gonna make it there in about three hours. So you, you'll be in uh, you'll be in charge. Just maintain your watch. Uh, if you see any lights that are not supposed to be there, just wake me up and uh, otherwise wake me up when we get to that point over there. Okay, good. Enjoy your sleep. Ciao. Alright, so we're here in Manzanillo. It's a beautiful place. Uh, we came here uh, to stop for the night at about 5 or 6 o'clock this morning. It's been... Uh, We've had a fairly rough weather uh, to come up the coast. The wind was against us pretty much the whole time. So we burned all of our fuel. So we're gonna go to Baja Navidad, refuel. And with the wind we got right now, it'd be hard to make it to Socorro here. So what I'm gonna do is just move 100 miles more up the coast to Puerto Vallarta, and then we'll be on our way sailing downwind or at least a beam towards uh, Socorro. Manzanillo seemed like a beautiful place. Too bad we're not gonna get to see it this time around. Or so we thought, we'll get back to that later. The night we came into Manzanillo, I noticed a shake on the propeller and uh, we thought we had got rid of it, but it kept coming. We're, uh, we're coming into uh, Ensenada Carrizal. Uh, when we got out of uh, Manzanillo, the wind was a bit stronger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so I just, uh, and we, we still have that shake a little bit on the prop and the water was dirty there, I didn't want to dive there. So it looks the water is a lot cleaner here. So we're just going to come at the, the end of that bay and drop the hook and then I'll go down and I'll check the anchor, probably pull it out and uh, do a transmission check to see if it's a transmission that's shaking or, or the prop. But I'm pretty sure it's the prop. this uh, shake on the prop that developed and uh, at some point it became a lot worse and I didn't know why exactly because we were not in an area where there was any sort of kelp or sea uh, seaweeds or of any sort uh, so I just dove underneath the boat and I found that this was stuck in the propeller so I'm not sure exactly what it is but it's a leopard pattern kind of piece of cloth which is all torn apart now and uh, that was like I went back and forth to try to take it off and I probably took off most of the chunk because uh, it was really bad at some point and then at some point it became tolerable, uh, the vibration that we had. And uh, now, uh, I don't know, like we'll have to try. But I, just to make sure, I'll pull out the prop and we'll give it a good clean to make sure that we don't have any sort of debris on it, some, some uh, shells or something like that. And then we'll be on our way. have to be checked once in a while it's happened to me to lose some uh, right now this prop is in pretty good condition I would say it's not bad it's not dented or anything like that it doesn't seem to be warp, uh, warped in any sort of fashion uh, if you look at this this part here this part here that I mean it's doesn't look much weight but it could be enough at 3000 rpm or 2000 rpm to uh, create a little bit of a vibration so now that there's no prop to it it's only my shaft 
if I start the engine and that vibration is there, it means there's a problem with the transmission and the transmission is actually, actually creating that vibration. If I start the engine and I spin the shaft and there's no vibration, it means the, all of the vibration that we're feeling on the way actually come from the fact that this prop has some leftover shells on it. I'm just gonna fire it up now. I hope there's no vibration now. If there isn't any vibration now, it's a big, big win for me. It means it's only my prop and I can live with that. Let's give her a bit of an RPM, see what it does. So 1500 RPM right now, no shake whatsoever. Nothing at all. 2000 RPM, which we were getting a lot of shake at, uh, back in the time when, when this was on and there's still no shake on the transmission. It, it runs perfectly smooth. So that tells me my transmission is good. The vibration are created only by this prop, which is great, great news. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very happy about that right now. Now we just need to clean the prop, put it back on and we're good to go. I think Nick deserves a beer. He looks pretty happy out there. So. <laughs> I'm so happy man. Now it's not shaking at all. It's back to almost being new. It's not, yeah, it is kind of new. It's like working perfectly now. Sure. that slowed us down quite a fair bit so we're just gonna turn back around go back to Manzanillo and I guess we'll get to visit it after all and that will be in the next episode this video was made possible thanks to our friends at Cloud19 if you appreciate content like this and want to be part of the Paradigm 2 adventure support us on Patreon